Hello and welcome to Sports by Compion. My name, of course, is Stephen Compion. That's right, guys. Stephen and Compion. And the, sh the, the show is called Sports by Compion. Yeah, you know, it's all coming together. And we're also joined here by Corey Compion. Also another Compion on the Compion fucking show. Here we, here we are. It's mm -hmm. just great, Corey. Hello. It's like we named a thing after ourselves. How yeah. cool is that? Dude, we're so smart. Which, and actually, I don't think it was that at first. I think no, it this wasn't. is like the third iteration of, of what we called this podcast. But that's fine. Right. Because, you know, we out here. We adapt. If we you adapt, don't adapt, improve, you won't overcome. survive. <laughs> you won't survive. And we will survive, okay? We will overcome these dark ages of, of sports and company. And we'll look back at this and be like, thank God we are covering United you know, Football League its first fucking year. Thank goodness. Somebody was talking about MLR in their, you know, six or something year. And thank goodness, Corey, that we're the fucking people to do it. God damn it, it's a fucking beautiful thing. People, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us. We're going to hop into some eh, United Football League action. We're going to hop into some MLR action. It's all happening. Get excited. Are you excited, Corey? I'm pretty excited. Dude, I'm pumped. This is great. Look at this. United Football League happening. Boom. Games took place this last weekend, week two, in the books, Corey. It's the divisions, quick. the divisions evened up a bit. It was yeah, very, even. It's very one-sided right now. I, uh, I like that. The, I approve. I'm into it. The league standings are identical in the United Football League and in the, um, I'm sorry, UFL. You, you get what I'm saying. It's evened up, Corey. It's exciting times. Okay, so starting off, Brahma's Showboat, dude. This game, Corey, was just sack central. You're, I was just. I loved it. It was beautiful because none of these guys could, you know, block for their quarterback. Apparently, everyone forgot okay, that it was only it was only two and three. Actually, it looked like a lot more. So you see, tackles for loss are eight and six. Like, dude, five sacks in a game is a lot. Yeah, but I thought it was a lot more. Like every time I looked up, it looked like there was another sack happening. Like these defenses both went off. And frankly, the Brahmas stole a victory here from the Showboats. Showboats were up nineteen seven. Going into the fourth quarter, it was a it was a battle the whole way, and you know, and basically the showboats. You know, you guys need to kick more touchdowns. You need to get more touchdowns than, than fucking field goals. Look at this shit, Corey. Six points, three. Although they might might have been a touchdown, I might have missed the extra point. But you get what I'm saying. Just look at this. This is uh... in the fourth quarter, twenty points. Yeah. It went from zero to twenty in one quarter. The Brahmas have like snuck in a, a second really close win, haven't they? Because I think their first win was also. No, uh, no, they actually had a pretty commanding win over the DC Defenders last week. Did they? Kind of commanding, I want to say. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. You like, continue. I'm gonna try to fact check our our lives. Your, your, your boy was your boy. The quarterback was like um was mic'd up, and I remember him being on the Cumberland Islands at one point. Like, I got dinner at eight thirty. Let's get this wrapped up because like, they were already well in the driver's seat. Cookies, anyway, right? There's cookies on the show. No, boats. that's not cookies. Cookies is on the showboats, which yeah, cookies has got to be sick about this one, dude, because they had this game. But granted, the Brahma's defense kept on showing up and holding up to field goals and doing what they had to do. They mostly kept the run game in check. Uh, your boy Victor. I wonder if this is this is our boy Victor. I wonder if this is the Victor. Oh fucking Darius Victor? himself. Was it Darius? Could uh, be. it might have been. Mr. Thunderthighs himself? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I remember his last name was Victor. I remember that. Right. How many? How many running backs named Victor really can there be? How many can there be? And Darius we're just does, assume it's him. Darius seems familiar. So yeah, he had kind of a tough day at the office. Honestly, only a three point two average. Um, but yeah, the show both got to be sick about this one. Both undefeated teams going into this game. Uh, the Brahmas now remain as one of only two undefeated teams in the United Football League. Corey, you know who the other one is, don't you? The the Stallions. I was gonna totally get there eventually. Absolutely, but I figured I'd save you some time. Stallions remain undefeated, but hey, man, Michigan Panthers came in here and put on a fight. You know, this was um, a back and forth game. Um, ultimately, Stallions did look in control, and dude, Matt Corral looked like he had some nice passes in this game, Corey. So a lot of them were like dumping off to his running back. Don't get me wrong, but he had one sequence, dude, where like he kind of completely flops his feet and like boom like perfect passing motion i was like all right all right that was pretty cool matt and uh yeah definitely had some big plays so uh, i think he had a pretty big run in this game too didn't he do run for some some yards there matt all right matt 
No, it doesn't look like you did, Corey. I'm lying to you about that part. But either way, decent day for I saw your boy. had a had a little breakaway. Hey, you were right. Brahma's beat DC Defenders last week 27 to 12. That took me way longer than it should have to find that information. But now we know. I'm over here talking up my boy. I mean, while well, he had like 53 yards. But I think he also had like a, the, the one touchdown pass of the day, which was a beautiful catch by, I think, the tight end. And I'm sorry, Corey, what did you say about the about that last game that you were back checking? Is it correct? Um, did they have a, a cruising victory? 27 to 12 or something like that. It was it was not close. Yeah, yeah, they they, they kind of cruised for one there. So I guess Martinez maybe got injured or they're just like you're sucking. So either way, it was a little bit of a back and forth between Martinez and Corral. I think they did this last week as well, though. Where they're like, it's still a quarterback battle to see who they want to put in there, you know? That's really dumb. Not great. But they're, they're, hey, they're still winning games. so. Or them, they're guess. doing like, a, you know, a couple packages for this guy, a couple packages for this guy. I think like Martinez, goes is out definitely wildcat. More, Martinez is definitely more of a runner. And he had a pretty long run in this game. Um, so that checks out. Yeah, he had a 29-yard run. So. Yeah, all right. Anyway, Stallions get the job done. As I mentioned, the Panthers had a, had a chance. They were down in the red zone, but they just could not protect their quarterback all day long. Um, as you can see, Stallions had seven sacks. So, nice. yeah, tough day at the office for our boy Perry. He just could not get any time to throw the pass ball. When he did, he did pretty good. 200 yards passing, uh, one touchdown, one interception. Um, not a bad day at the office for him when he could pass but they weren't really into that kind of stuff. And they also had eight tackles for loss. Another huge day out of the Stallions defense. Oh, you know what? Last thing I wanted to say about this Memphis, Chobos, and Brahms game. So the Brahms get a touchdown. It's 14 to 19. But like less than a minute or maybe like a minute and a half left. And you're like, all right, but like what's going to happen? Dude, I didn't, I don't know what happened, Corey, but somehow the fucking Brahms ended up with the ball back in the red zone again and scored. So that was not like a crazy ass conversion. That was in fact another touchdown. So like two back to back touchdowns under two minutes. So yeah. Well, so don't they have like an alternative to an onside kick where they can do like a oh. fourth, like a fourth down, you know, thirty yards? Maybe yard that's pass what whatever. it was. No, I don't know, dude. It, like it could be. Either way, I really should have known that. They don't do onside kicks. I know that for sure. These they do. They do some kind of crazy play. And also, I don't think they have any kicking for extra points. I think you go either for one, two, yeah. or three points. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's serious stuff. Um, anyway, so that, do you have anything further to say about the Birmingham Stallions? I think that's it. I don't know if these guys have lost, like, one game in, like, their whole history. It's pretty ridiculous. They're... One or two games. But I'm telling you, that's that home field advantage because they had uh they had the whole time camped out there. So did we ever figure out what they did with uh, redrafting? Did they just have really good coaches there? And I have no idea how they did it. No, but I think they get to keep you. I think you get to keep some of your players. Maybe like only some get thrown into the draft because there's a lot of guys back where they started, or maybe those teams just made sure they picked them again. It must. It must be that they kept most of their guys, and then the teams that dissolved, they picked from those guys. Yeah, that would make sense because, like, for example, um, Perez is back there with the Arlington uh, Arlington again. Like, yeah, that's a, that's he closed like out with them last time. That doesn't seem like a coincidence, and I'm pretty sure this Perry dude was was with the uh with was with, with Michigan last year too. Mm. So I think we're putting this together, dude, without even doing any research. We're just so fucking smart. We're just figuring it out, man. We're, we're, we're just, just so we're freaking just big smart. brain out here, bro. Big brain. Anyway, the, the, we'll see if anyone can beat these Birmingham Stallions. It's pretty impressive the run they're on right now. Um, a team that kind of struggled with their life was the DC Defenders, but they did ultimately pull off the win against the Roughnecks. Roughnecks dude. fall to zero and two. One and one for the defenders now. Tom Alvu uh, whatever had a pretty good day. His one interception yeah, was back for a touchdown early in the game. Very convenient for him, um, and it looked like a pretty bad pass. But other than that, he was pretty on point for most of the day, as you can see by his stat line. Uh, dude, they gotta get the run game going. So like they got a couple of random. They got like 500 different people trying to run the ball over here. Like how about you just give one dude like 10 carries or something? What's going on? Well, those are no are rushers crazy? above. Those are all receivers. Oh yeah, that makes way more sense. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, this dude needs to do way better. Come on, Higgins. For Tamu's out there <laughs> catching passes. Who's fucking throwing the ball to Tamu? Uh, dude, no, Tamu was running it. Tamu ran. Oh yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Got confused. <laughs> dude, I'm also oh, lost yeah. in the sauce. We out here. 
We out of here, bro. But this dude averaged 2.6 yards per carry. Like, get your life together. And your friend didn't do that much better. O- overall, bad rushing day for the boys. They didn't do much better. Uh, this dude, can, he did okay, I guess, 4.3. But, like, everyone's struggling to run the ball in this league. Can we get some running backs figuring their life out around here? Okay, you know what it is? It's, it's offensive lineman cohesion is what the problem is, I bet. Yeah. But, like, so look at my man with two attempts and zero yards. That's a tough stat to go home with. <laughs> T. Evans? Is he at least a receiver? Scroll down. Let's see if oh, he yeah, made any no, catches no. at least. Yeah, is he a receiver? Yeah, okay. He got a catch he, for 14 He got to hit a big catch. All right, buddy. So If you're going to be named Evans and wearing number 13 and playing wide receiver, you need to be better, dude. Am I wrong, Corey? Like, there's a Mike Evans out there with the exact same jersey and and that and last name. You need to be better, T. Evans. God damn it, Evans. So, I, tell tell me if you saw this play, Steve. I think it was this game, um, where this receiver makes like this uh this beautiful over the top catch, just like outruns everybody. Looks like he's about to score. It's literally like one man to beat. The guy comes from behind. Punches the ball I out. And it just, this, like, and it right my man's hands. He's like, "Oh shit, I'll take that." Dude, that was like, hilarious. Dude, I saw the dude. It was this game, right? It was this game. Wasn't that the Roughnecks that happened to? I think I mean, the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was a DC was defender that picked because, it off. All right, so for, first of all, there was five fumbles in the game. It's a lot of fumbles. But, like mostly recovered by the same team who fumbled it, right? Except for that one, and I do believe ball security that an issue in this game. <laughs> Dude, well, I think it's an issue across the league. I think there was a bunch of fumbles yeah. in the other leagues, too. Um, Dude, it then, seemed like my man gave up and started, like, celebrating. He was like, yeah, I fucking did it, like, before he had the last dude beat. And, like, what's funny is I saw he didn't even try to get up to, like, make the tackle. He was just like, fuck. And just kind of, like, laid there. He was probably there. beat, dude. He was probably dead. He did know, have just know. outrun, like, five guys, so exactly. it makes sense. He's dead. And he's like, the ball's gone. He's demoralized. Let the man, let the man lay. Anyway, I'm done. DC Stick a fork in me. I'm done, dude. Um, Roughnecks hung with them all day. As you can see, Corey, this was a field goal battle all day. It was just field goal, field goal, field goal. The defender shout fucking out, shout out to the quarter. kickers. Shout out to the kickers in this game, <laughs> doing the Lord's work. Um, yeah, what's it called? Dan would love this. Dan would just love all this kicking. Shout so what are Dan. we looking at? We have one passing touchdown. Yeah. Scroll down. Any rushing? No, well, I, just want to the... see how, I want to see how many kicks happened here. Duh, duh, here we go, field goals. So, yeah, this dude had two. Okay, that's not as many as I thought. This guy only had one. So, never mind, Corey. I was wrong. It's just a whole lot of missing their extra points and going on. But that's because they can't kick the extra points. They have to do some kind right, of weirdness. Right, right, right. Well, either way, I thought it was like two field goals riding up to these sixes, but ah, not well, the case. We have one passing touchdown, so that means there has to be a rushing touchdown somewhere? Yeah, um, so this dude threw, threw one, and this dude ran for one. Our boy. No, that that guy, he received one. No, this is. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, there's no rushing touchdown. So and oh, then, because yeah, the other the other one was a pick six. The first one true. was a pick six by by Tavo. Yeah. Yeah. Tamu. Yeah. It's like it's like Tamu, but Tamu. Hmm. I'm I not think. gonna try to pronounce that because I think you just killed that. We're gonna move on. Um, so the game that I like, of course, is the old Battlehawks pull off the victory court. Three-point victory. It was a nice and tight game all day with the Arlington Renegades. But, dude, this dude right here, Mr. Ant- Ant-Man, is a bad motherfucker. He balled out last game with a fucking beautiful catch along the sideline and had a nice touchdown as well. Should have been the go-ahead touchdown, but they lost in the last second anyway. This week, he fucking blows over the coverage and got an absolute gorgeous t- deep touchdown um, and had one earlier in the game, too. 114 yards, two touchdowns Two today. touchdowns. I've, I think he's emerging as the best receiver in the league. I mean, I am biased, of course, because I'm a Battlehawks fan, but this dude, he's been doing scary stuff with, um, two weeks in a row now. Let's see if he can keep it up. Exciting news. This is my last Saturday of doing uh, overtime, so I might actually be able to start catching some of these games. Maybe I'm going to pick up this dude's jersey. Who knows? I do. Maybe I might. Who knows? He's a, I, need he's a, a, I need a jersey in my life from one of these guys. I'm also a teams. real big fan of AJ McCarron, dude. He's also looking like one of the best quarterbacks in this league so far. And like, He's he the guy that came over from right Canada, to... right? What's that? He came over from Canada? No, he's actually he actually like was with the... Um, with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, and, and well, he played with the Battlehawks the previous year, 
Then he went to the Bengals, and then they came back, and he was like, yeah, I'll go back because I actually want to play and have my kids see me play, as opposed to just sitting on the practice squad forever. With his Wasn't family. he in a playoff game? I think he was in a playoff game since, uh, what's his name, got hurt? Joe Burrow. No, no. You're thinking of, Jay, of um, no, you're thinking of the other dude. Uh, what's his name? Jay something, or the guy from Washington. But, um, mm. I forget his name right now. We were talking about him as a backup. And uh, I don't think he made a hit. I don't think he was in the playoff game. Anyway, uh, AJ McCarron is also a former Alabama national champion winner, I believe. Could be wrong about that. But yeah. So right. I just, I don't know. He's just doing the right things out there, dude. Leading the boys. I mean, if um, he's NFL caliber, then yeah, obviously he's going to dominate in this league. He's even doing if good. he's like a backup. Uh, ben Danucci, he is he back? Is no, he Ben Danucci. You know, he's still with the Packers oh, or somewhere. Right. He's still, in, he's in the NFL. No, I, I think I think it's the, the Broncos. But yeah, he's still in the NFL. Um, and yeah, speaking of running backs actually doing something, our boy Durant got it done, Corey. 14 carries, 104 yards, one touchdown. One very nice long 41-yard run, which they absolutely needed to put them into that field goal range. So he kind of sealed off the game for them. It was very nice of him. Balled out. The Battle, the battle Hawks balled out. As you can see by Perez, decent day out of him too, though. You know, the Battle Hawks three, three really yards. had some well, some fucking guys. The quarterback balled out. The running back rushed for 100 yards. We got your man Atman out here with 100 yards. Like, well, they should be two and zero. And um, you know, with that last minute loss last week, that's why they uh, aren't. So, hey, all I'm saying, Steve, we picked a good team. Let's fucking go, dude. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Well, they're close to me, and I was also like Battle Hawks. I'm like, oh, sign me up, dude. They got sick colors too. Look at that symbol. We gotta get they jerseys, were dude. they were we like my I think we need jerseys. They were my, my like second favorite team. I, like. I just, I was generals just because the generals were local, but I was I was partial to the Battlehawks because they're also like chugging beers in the locker room. They're doing some dope shit. That's also where Tyler Heineke came from. Oddly I'm enough, look at I... some of these 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 last names here of the defense. See if I want to buy any of their jerseys. We gotta look like a real bad motherfucker. Who had a good game? Look at this dude, two sacks and three tackles for loss. Look at that fucking last name. That's that's just crazy, dude. I could have Polynesian that. for sure. My man's Polynesian straight off an island. Sure. Oh yeah, let's have a look at this lad. You guys got a picture of him? Come on, showcase your boy. Show us not, the Polynesian wonder. It's not right. Oh well, hell of a game out of him though. Uh, dude, out. but that he free does. safety, your man Q Cole. He's out here with nine tackles. He's fucking leading oh, yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this guy's the front runner right now for who I'll buy my jersey of, Mr. Peta himself. I can't pronounce that last name, but bad motherfucker, apparently. We should have to look up the stat lines of these guys. Come on now. The haters. I yeah, like you should the, absolutely uh, maybe buy the receiver, the, the, if you do buy jersey, that, that, that ad man. I like this one play. corner. Scroll down. My man has a real quiet game. He only has two tackles, but he's a corner and he has two pass breakups. This dude, uh, oh, C. Yeah, Page right and Jones, he's out here doing work as a corner. I assume. Yeah. I don't know. That or they're yeah. not throwing at him. But two that's pass breakups, day. that's it's nothing to... Uh, no, it's a good day's work. Nothing to schmock at, you know? It's not a word. Nothing to schmock uh, at, indeed. Anyway, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's uh, you and uh, United Football League. They're trucking along into uh, week three. Pretty cool stuff. They're getting yep. broadcasted on, on Fox Sports. We're here for it. It's a good time. Uh, moving on, we got other action to cover, Corey, because there was rugby also happening out there in the world. It was it was a part of the thing, and guess what? The DC Defenders have tied. No, not the DC Defenders. The Old Glory DC have tied for the second time this season. Now, I'm assuming this is an MLR. Could you do the research, please? Is this an MLR record? Like, there's no way a team has tied twice in one season. But furthermore. How many other sports is this even happening? Like, is, you know what I mean? Like, I I can't say I've seen too many ties. Well, I mean, everyone's racking up ties this year. But two in one year? It's crazy. So I just think it's funny. I type in MLR ties. The first thing that comes up is, like, zip ties. And then after that is, like, like a tie you'd have around your neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's going to be hard, actually. I don't, I don't even know if anyone – do they have journalists covering this? Like, there's no articles about it anywhere. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna fucking figure it out, Steven. God damn it, dude. All right. Anyway, uh, this game was crazy, dude. Like, um, DC has some serious moles, 
and Los Angeles has the cool little uh, flick plays. I feel like they have a really good back line out there in LA. And there are cool plays that they can do with that back line and with the forwards hopping in there. Really makes them dangerous with the ball. But, um, you know, as a newer team, I think they're still gelling a little bit. Where at DC Glory, I mean, Old Glory, I don't know what's going on with these guys. Like, they, they're really good. They'll beat the Free Jackets, and then they'll tie with, uh, with LA and with Chicago. So who the fuck knows what's going on in this league, who, where anybody stands. But these guys, dude, they tied again, Corey. They it's just crazy. they they like keeping things even. They're like you score a little bit, we'll score a little bit. You know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna keep it fair. Hold on, did they get four yellow cards? No, LA got yellow, four yellow cards and a red card. Jeez, and gave up fourteen penalties, and they still still tied. It's a pretty good day for them, honestly. I have no idea, Stephen. I I can't figure it out, and uh, you know I. Don't... I think we're just hey, gonna... if we find out, we're gonna put it out on YouTube as well, like a community answer because nobody covers anything in this sport. So I'm, be the one I'm to just gonna declare that it is. That's an MLR yeah. record. It's I thought an maybe MLR record. It's you said be. there was only six seasons, so I thought maybe I could just like go back and look at the standings <laughs> from previous seasons. They don't even have standings for 2023. At least not that I can find. I don't know. Whoever is running their website is like a, a year-to-year basis. They don't they don't care about history around here. <laughs> There's a wiki. Let's see what their wiki has. All right, we gotta move on. The all glory tied, dude. Again, we got we got talk to Dan. What what is going on, Dan? It's crazy over there. Anyway, moving on to the Free Jackets taking care of business against Miami. Oh, no, it was definitely not a record, dude. Toronto Arrows had two draws last year. No, oh, never mind. I guess draws are more common than I think. Pure so. Yeah, they, they tied uh, Rugby, ATL, and Old Glory. Old Glory out here getting those ties. <laughs> Old Glory loves tying it. <laughs> All right, all right. We have to be serious, Corey. For example, the Jackets. They're just they're just good, dude. I don't know if anyone's gonna be able to beat these guys. And like that number ten just does number ten stuff and looks really good all the time. Um, this game was I mean kind of close maybe at one point, like the first twenty minutes, and then just completely got out of hand for Miami. Because um, turns out when you're playing a really good team like the Free Jackets, they will find ways to continue to like they had the ball most of the game. Miami they just couldn't do anything with it. As you can see. Free Jack is just not missing tackles. They're, I think they're eight. They're in eight. Has like twenty some so, tackles and a try. Hell of a day out of him. So Steve, Old Glory may not hold the record for most in a season, but they definitely have the record for most ties because I'm all the way back in 2021 now, and they have another tie. <laughs> yeah, it's Old Glory. They got four. Four. Plus, Toronto they have four so far. They have four so far, and I'm in 2021. Tor- I mean, Toronto folded, so, like, they're not even in competition anymore now. So, like, yeah, Old, old Glory's got to be the king of ties. <laughs> um, but, yeah, these Miami's struggling out here to find a win. Poor bastards. And you're not going to find it against the Free Jackets. They're going to do Free Jackets shit. Tough times. Hey, Corey, the Hounds won. Yeah, let's go. They, they, like, did, like, the Hound stuff they've been doing the previous two weeks. But instead of just like sucking and and you know sucking and letting the other team score a bunch of tries, they didn't, and they just continued to do cool stuff. And they had a pretty commanding win over Nola Gold. And now Nola had this game pretty close. They in fact had the lead for most, uh, I would say about yeah sixty percent of it or something like that. Um, but then the Hounds just got going and they never looked back. The big game out of James. Or five damage based on the dude's name. It's real sad. This really should give us like names of guys with the stats. You know what I mean? Corey, be nice. Cause, like I, it's James something. Anyway, he's on the all all MLR team of the week. Hell of a game out of him. He had two tries. They have a big old British. They make a team Tigers. every week. They're like yeah, it's pretty cool. We gotta look this up because it is worth looking at. But we'll, we'll cover the last couple games and we'll hop over to that because it is pretty cool. And they talk about the stats of these, these guys. Dude, these guys are like twenty five tackles. And they get, Dude. like, two tries and shit. It's like, whoa, bro, calm down. 25? Bro, some of these guys have 25 or 21, and then, like, they all showed up to, like, 25 rucks. It's like, dude, what? I'd be tired. Like, That's a let's lot. Get, what, let's get to those stats, dude, because they're crazy. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a hot minute here. Dude, Jackals! Ah! 
Jackals. So close. It was. It was in. It was within reach. Once again, Seattle Seawolves playing dangerous with that whole defeat. Um, but they find a way and beat the Jack and beat the Jackals with a last minute kick, similar to how they beat the uh, the Hounds. Regardless of that last minute try, whatever. The kick is what really beat them, and um, they do the same thing here against the Jackals. Uh, tennis is cool, cool uh, ice in the veins, baby. Dude just kicks it through when he needs to, Cork. Yeah. Hell, uh, hell of a kicker. They're doing some fine work, um, and they continue to find ways to win. Jackals find, continue to be in these games with really good teams and just can't quite get it done. I have a two. Their hooker had five tries, Corey. Five. Cinco. Because they just kept on doing malls, and Seattle could not stop it. They could just not stop these try these uh, these malls, and Jackal just absolutely dominated there, dude. They had five fucking, they're, they're, like I said, their hooker had five tries. It's wild. He had all their tries. The dude was greedy, just took them all. But yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, hell of a day, <laughs> hell of a day for him. Um, and then Anthem, dude. Anthem, I feel like they're in these games for like 50, 60 minutes. And then maybe they just get tired or their substitutes aren't very good. And teams just roll over them in, the, in that little, like, last 20 minutes or so because Utah, that's pretty much what happened. This game was close, and then it absolutely wasn't. Utah just completely got going with it, similar to the Hounds' uh, Nola Gold game. One team gains momentum and just kind of run away with it. What's the deal? Can they just sub in whoever they want whenever they want? No, you got seven subs. I think like seven subs, and then yeah, the guy can't come back on the field if you take him off. Oh, so if you're out, you're out for the day. You're out for the day. So what if you got like ten, like you're out of subs. You've used all seven of your subs, and one of your dudes like snaps his ankle in half. You just play with ten people. Uh, fourteen. Um, no, you could get you can get an injury sub. Okay. Blood sub, they call them. A blood sub. Blood sub. Blood sub. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway. <laughs> Look, it's a hardcore look, at name. Look, look at the team of the week, dude. Look at these guys. Fucking all right. There's our boy, James Scott. That's right. And uh, also, who made it was our um, loose head prop. So that's this. that's three dudes from the same team. No. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah, Billy Minks also made it, dude. Billy Minks looks so cool. The dude's like all tatted up and just. What team are they? Know, on the Hounds. It's the boys. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, it's our so boy. they get the they get a win and get three dudes on the fucking uh on the roster. Yeah, and of course our boy uh, who had five tries is in there. <laughs> Understandable. And then of course yeah. Jason, Jason just is, just is in here every week. I feel like it's like almost every week our boy Jason's there happily at number ten. He lives there. Probably, it's his spot. He's probably, the, he's probably the best number ten in the, in the league, Corey. Look at that. Anyway, this guy twenty three rucks as a loose prop. He got to twenty three rucks and ten tackles. 14 meters, uh, 20 rucks, f- uh, six tackles, five tries. What, though, what the fuck board. is a ruck? Ruck is when you go block, and, like basically make sure they don't steal it from your teammate after he gets tackled. Mm. So covering like, your boy while he's down. Yeah, basically you ruck over so they can't steal the ball, and then the scrum half comes and grabs it and throws it out. That's cool. So, That's a stat. Yeah, so, like, it is the coolest just... stat. That I wish our I wish Carfu could tag it, but who would? Anyway, um, so that, that's like kind of the closest guy. thing to a defensive Moody. stat outside of a tackle. Yeah, uh, for offense, basically, it's basically an offensive stat because it's when you're on offense. Gotcha. But yeah, um, it's kind of like for an offensive lineman, sort of. You got to a block almost. Yeah. All right. So anyway, this guy, twenty-five tackles, core and two tries in the same day. That's this guy right here, Frank. Uh, so, so walk me through this. Cereal, so, Frank, but I'm here for it, dude. That's a good day. <laughs> have to find days work. So, Steve. So the dude gets tackled, right? So yeah. you tackle the dude. So you that just tackled the dude and the dude who just got tackled, they're laying there. Your boys both come and mug each other, and if they like shove your blockers over, they can just pick up the ball. Is that how it works? This is called, yeah, it falls out. So, so yeah. you gotta just do like a little shoving match to protect, and then you pass it to your dudes, and they run off to the sides. Correct. So the guy who gets tackled, the first thing you do is you get one rugby move to essentially grab the ball and try to push it back to your team or put it, like, in the convenient spot where your team can grab it. And then you want to form your body so that you're a gate, which is basically your shoulder to your hip, is the only place it can come in through. 
So that's why whenever you're getting tackled, the guy who's rucking over you, who's like blocking for you, is going to go right over top of your body and put one sh- one hand on your shoulder, one hand on your hip, and that's the gate. So they have to go through him. They can't just go. They can't go around. They can't do anything weird. They have to go right through his shoulders. And then your boys form up behind to like support to him. Give him, a, give him a little extra support. Yeah. That seems it seems very very intimate. <laughs> very very yeah. long. Oh yeah, you gotta put your shoulder right in the dude's ass and, and hold tight. I've I've been in situations where like a smaller team of mine is up there, like Mike, for example, will be up there and he's just getting rocked by some dude and I'm just like basically like he's in midair and I'm just sort of like you love the <laughs> using him as a shield <laughs> to keep him in front. I'm like, you gotta stay there, Mike. <laughs> It's tough. It's tough times out there sometimes. And I'm also is, in the other position where I'm in midair and my teammate is leveraging me to keep me in front. It has happened. Uh, there's actually a video of me like where I, uh, I, when I was playing running back, I'd get the ball and I like, I see my one lineman just kind of like jogs out into space and he's just kind of like chilling. So I'm like behind him and there's like all these mean people who want to mug me. So I like grab the back of his jersey. I grab him by like the back of the collar and I'm kind of like, Looking and I just like throw him at a guy and run away. <laughs> That's awesome. But anyway, shout out to Frank, dude. What a fucking hell of a day out of him. And of course, our boy James Scott also in there with two tries. Um, this dude, not that crazy. This guy opens out a flank for 21 tackles. Here we go 24 tackles and 11 uh, rucks arrived at. So yeah, cool stuff. And then we get into the back line. They just did the. Uh, scores and stuff like that it's not as cool but yeah dude hell of a day hell of a week for the mlr um we are plowing through this the free jackets are well in the lead of this all but you know that you have to they're they have the exact same score um sorry record as the sea wolves so tightly contested quick update the rockford ravens had our first action of the spring season of the 2024 season in general um, and they, we hosted the Dubuque gentleman and Dubuque, Dubuque gentleman. It's down is in that, Iowa for you. Is that like where they're from? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, Dubuque. Yep. Uh, and they're called the gentleman. So anyway, gentlemen came on up. <clears throat> we had the silverbacks come on from Chicago and we hosted them and kind of did like a three tournament team tournament team. We played the Dubuque first, had a pretty commanding win, could have been better, but we had some mistakes, and we gave up a stupid try on a penalty, um, but 20-7 to 7 overall, good day for the boys. Then we then we took a break while the Silverbacks played Dubuque, which they won with a last-minute try, Then we played the Silverbacks, strategic advantage, perhaps, but we also were the home team, so anyway, fuck yourselves. And then we played the Silverbacks, and we <clears throat> should have beat them by more, Corey. We were up two tries at halftime. Second half, we just had two stupid turnovers, and they also got another try. Tied at 19. We get into third side of the ball, get a penalty. Mr. William Archer, the young lad who um, had some controversy on the team, but <clears throat> had a hell of a day kicking the ball, and he stepped up and nailed a kick through to get the Ravens our second win of the day. So shout out William Archer, hell of a kick, and we are officially two and zero on the season, Corey. Even though there are shorter games, it's still two and zero. We're still taking it. Let's go. Yeah, good day, good start. Um, but we do travel down to Peoria this week. I have yet to beat them down there in Peoria, Corey. So yeah, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a hell, uh, should be a hell of a clash. Good times. People continue to like and subscribe our content. So Corey can one day, you know, buy himself a yacht. I do need a yacht. That's that's what he needs. I need it. (laughs) He needs it, though. Don't worry. It'll be like, you know, eco-friendly. Right, Corey? Oh, yeah. By the time I can afford a yacht, we're going to have solar-powered everything. For sure. Exactly. It's going to be dope. Um, So, yeah. Support Corey's goal to have a yacht. Support Sports by Compion. Thank you for tuning in, guys. You know, and also, if you're around, you know, and looking for something to do, go work out. Stop it. 